All right, welcome back. Now that we're towards the end of chapter 7, we get to test out all the things we've learned in this chapter. Uh, these extra problems are really good, and they use parts from other questions we've seen before. Such is the case with this question. The statement reads, Two long, straight copper pipes, each of radius A, are held at a distance 2D apart. One is at potential V0, the other is at negative V0. The space surrounding the pipes is filled with weakly conducting material of conductivity sigma. Find a current per unit length that flows from one pipe to another. All right, let's draw it out. As you see, we have the negative to the left and the positive uh, potential to the right. Radius A, conductivity sigma, and some weird material of conductivity uh, sigma, excuse me, and separated by a distance of 2D. All right. Does this look familiar at all? Because it should. All right, so our solution is, well, we've seen it before. Uh, remember that question of parallel lines uh, in, in chapter two and three? So if we reframe the question and we consider these pipes to be wires, then we'll be just fine. And we can use the results we found before. So that's what we do. And so we uh, change it to two parallel wires carrying charges plus or minus lambda as shown, and we'll go ahead and redraw that out. And you see we have now a reframed question separated by distance B apart, um, which again we know is 2D. <clears throat> and then we have plus or minus lambda, so we have seen this before. All right, and what we found with this setup was that E was equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught S in the S hat direction with potential negative lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught the natural log S over A. All right, pretty standard stuff. We've seen it before. Um, and then further, what we saw was that the potential at some point for both of the wires uh, was uh, S minus over S plus, which was the minus wire and positive charge wire. And if we put that into a um, larger picture, we see that um, S minus was a separation distance. So if we <coughs> use Pythagorean theorem, we see that this is equal to y plus b squared plus z squared, and then y minus b squared plus z squared. Okay, and so what we want is the current per unit length in terms of v naught, d, and a, and so that's why we write it as little i, not to be confused with imaginary. All right, so to find the locus of points of fixed v, because remember, the original cylinders were given at v naught, okay, we know that this happens at equipotential surfaces. So what we need to do is solve this all for V because we know that the V is constant there and find out where the locations are. And that's what we do. We set V equal to, uh, we know that V was equal to that um, monster with the natural log on the last page. So if we push everything over to the left-hand side, we know that that's all still constant. Okay, that's what equipotential surfaces are. And so if we do that, and then we solve for what's inside the natural log, so we can actually find out where they're located, we see that in solving, we get an exponential, and we'll call the exponential to the 4 pi epsilon naught v over lambda. We'll call that mu, just to make calculations simple. <clears throat> and then we just multiply and divvy out. What we see here is that the left-hand side looks pretty close to the right-hand side, so we have to minus the right-hand side over to set it equal to zero. So we can form some kind of quadratic. And that's what we do. We see we just get a bunch of uh, mu's and <clears throat> mu plus one, mu minus one. And then we divide everything by mu minus one to create a standard form, if you will. And then we see that we have mu plus one over mu minus one, which we'll call beta. And so from there, all we're left that we're trying to do is in the y term, we're trying to complete the square. And then once we do that, we see that we get y minus b beta squared plus z minus b beta squared minus 1 equals 0. And so from pushing that uh, beta term over, or the b term, excuse me, what we see is that we have a equation of a circle. And we know that circles are um, y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared equal r squared. All right, so then from this form, we know that the center, or why not, 
is equal to b beta, which we know b, or excuse me, that beta is mu plus 1 over mu minus 1. And if we look, z squared is this by itself, so the center for z is that z equals 0. Now the radius we have to do a little more work on, so it's r squared equals b squared times beta squared minus 1. We just take the positive square root. Again, radius can't be negative, so it doesn't matter. And then we just substitute in. We work our way through. And then we see that uh, since beta was a fraction, we have to find a common denominator, so that's what we do. And then we factor out, and then uh, foil out, excuse me, and then cancel terms, thanks to that minus sign in the middle. So you see we get uh, plus two mu minus a negative two mu, which cancels to four mu. So we have two b over square root mu, um, and then divided by mu minus one. So that comes down pretty quick, pretty nice. Just be careful that fraction. All right, and what this suggests is an image solution to the problem at hand. Remember that we morphed the given problem into a problem we've seen before, and so there's a certain level of symmetry that was given in the problem before, the wires, that we need to be able to morph into this current situation. With that, we want y not equal to d, and the radius at a, again, look at the diagram, uh, for a positive v naught, we were separated from a distance d away from the origin, and then we had the exact negative on the other side of that, so it's symmetri uh, symmetrical in that sense. Okay, so that's why we're trying to use this as an image problem, because we know what the radius on the right-hand side is, so we want to mimic that on the left-hand side. Hence, y not equal d, radius equal a, because that's what was given, and v equal v naught. Again, all those things were given, and these will determine the parameters here that we don't know from the previous problem, i.e., b, mu, and lambda of the image solution, all right? So what we need to do is to find the possible solutions of mu that it can take in terms of the given parameters. The reason why is due to needing the lambda to determine the current. All right, so let's do it. So remember that exponential that we set equal to mu? Let's solve it again and solve that for lambda. So we have the exponential equal mu, then we take ln of both sides, and then we solve this for lambda. So we multiply lambda over, divide by ln mu, and here we go. This is the line charge of the image problem. Okay, pretty easy to see there. And so if we want the current, or excuse me, this is the line charge in the image problem. So the current per unit length, I, little i is equal to i over L. And we know that uh, the i, capital I, is equal to j dot dA, the current density times the surface area, and then we can morph that into conductivity in the times the E field with the dA, and then we know that E is just equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, okay, which Q enclosed here is just lambda L, and we see that lambda L um, can simplify down because the L's will cancel, and from above we see that lambda is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught V naught over L and mu, cancel it or so sub that in we see that the epsilon knots cancel and we see that we take on sigma 4 pi v naught over ln mu all right so then let's consider the following ratio so we can find mu explicitly that isn't uh determined in terms of the exponential or v naught things like that so if we let alpha be the ratio of the separation distance from the origin to the uh ratio or excuse me the radius of the pipe then we see that we have y naught over radius, and we solved for what those were earlier. If you recall, y naught was equal to the, um, in the line problem, y naught was equal to the center point, which was b uh, mu, I believe, something like that. Uh, yeah, b mu, or b beta, excuse me. And so, and then radius we also solved, which was 2b mu over mu minus 1. So once we plug those in, we see the blue terms cancel, that's mu minus 1, and we see the b's cancel, so we're left with mu plus 1 over 2 square root mu. Alright, so we have something from mu here in terms of the given parameters d and a that are substituted as alpha, and so now we just solve this for mu. Okay, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, charity work here with the quadratics, the square of both sides, all that stuff, factor it out, blah blah blah. Now we get to the point where we have to use the quadratic equation. Let's cancel through. We see that we get some nastiness, so be very careful. I tried using the red to see what cancels each step, so you're not just blinded by the work for it. 
Um, but, I mean, it's, the math is pretty straightforward, but the setup for this was pretty fun to play with. Um, so once we whittle down uh, everything from the quadratic equation, we see that we're left with uh, 2 alpha squared minus 1 plus or minus 2 alpha square root alpha squared minus 1. And what we need to know is which sign is correct. So suppose that the cylinders are far apart, or that the separation distance d is much greater than the radius of the cylinder. Then alpha is much, much greater than 1, because remember alpha was d over a, okay? So if I have a big thing in the numerator and a small thing in the denominator, then I'm going to be really large, which is great. So if we, on this assumption, we can factor out the alpha squared and the square root, and we see that we get something that can cancel down because of one minus or one minus one over alpha squared. Uh, and what this means is that that square root can be expanded because we should be convergent there, and we expand it to this uh, series here: one minus one over two alpha squared minus one over eight alpha squared plus, and then so on and so forth. You can find those in tables. And then if you distribute everything, you see you get this weird plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, plus, minus, you know, this up and down fluctuation. And if we add them together by the plus signs, this is what we get. If we add them together by the minus signs, we see this is what we get. So the current must surely decrease with increase in alpha, right? Because alpha is going to get bigger, the separation is bigger, so the current needs to be dropping off. So evidently, the plus sign is the only one that is correct because, as you see, as it gets bigger, 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 um, as alpha gets bigger, 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 it still converges to 4 over alpha squared. Uh, so the plus sign is it. And then if we substitute that into the current, we see here that i is equal to 4 pi sigma v naught over l and mu. And then we just plug in mu. And, uh, yeah, that was a hefty problem of getting things together but being able to compare and contrast old problems with this thing and just being able to modify the solution saves a lot of time you just have to be careful knowing how to do it because with this having a you know plus or minus relationship with respect to the origin allowed the image problem to make life much easier so you know be careful use what you have make life easy don't forget the basic math